Julieta Sanchez is a U.S. permanent resident who lives in San Diego. She brought her son, Fernando, from Mexico when he was 15. He was very hardworking. He liked work and he was very active. Fernando finished school, then worked installing floors and carpets in Chula Vista. But eventually, he began to struggle with addiction, using crystal meth. He started getting skinny, and I wondered what it could be. And then he started saying things that didn't make sense. Rehab was too expensive in the U.S. for Sanchez. So she sent him back to Tijuana, where rehab is more affordable. The day they were going to check him in, she says, Fernando was shot and killed in Tijuana. He was 29. No arrests were made, and the case is still a mystery. I don't want vengeance. I don't want vengeance. I want more government control over these people selling guns to kids. Sanchez can be pretty sure the gun used to kill her son came from the U.S. Tijuana's police chief, Marco Antonio Sotomayor, says nearly all of the guns used to kill people in Mexico are smuggled in from the U.S. We know that those weapons come from the U.S. because inside Mexico, there's no way for them to buy them. They buy them in places like Arizona, Nevada, because of the weak gun laws, gun shows. Mexico has only one gun shop. It's controlled by the military in Mexico City. The gun laws for civilians are extremely strict, with six-month background checks and a federal registry of every person who buys a gun person-to-person firearm sales are prohibited. But both Mexico and Tijuana are seeing record levels of gun violence, with homicides nationwide hitting an all-time high of 33,000 last year. Sotomayor says Tijuana police have seized more than 2,000 weapons in the city during the past three years, and most have U.S. markings. It's very, very complicated to buy a gun here in Mexico. It's very hard to buy a gun in Mexico. We have a very intensive process before you can buy one. If you guys had that, it would be really helpful. President Trump has painted a bleak picture of criminals and drugs pouring into the U.S. from Mexico. But speaking at the National Rifle Association Forum this month, he didn't mention the U.S. guns pouring into Mexico. In fact, he announced that the U.S. was withdrawing from an international arms agreement aimed at cracking down on illegal weapons trading. Every day you stand up for our God-given rights without exception, without fail, and without apology. Together we are fighting for the timeless values that have built and sustained our nation. What we're seeing more of the polymer pistol Ernesto Diaz is a special agent with the U.S. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, or ATF. He says there's been an increase in large caliber weapons being smuggled into Mexico from the U.S. Those weapons are being used by drug cartel to enforce their, their business, if you will, to go after law enforcement, Mexican authorities and innocent civilians. Diaz says there's also been an increase in U.S. gun parts going into Mexico and being assembled there. About 70 percent of weapons seized at crime scenes in Mexico last year that were submitted to U.S. authorities were traceable to the U.S. Diaz says ATF is trying to combat the situation by going after smugglers in the U.S. Many are U.S. citizens. There are individuals associated with cartels that reside in the United States. Sanchez, who believes her son died due to the lack of control over U.S. guns, says she hopes something is done about the problem soon. They killed my son. Then they're going to kill another. And it's going to keep happening. They're young. These men are young. The gun-fueled violence south of the border has contributed to the increasing number of people seeking asylum in the U.S., And experts believe that controlling the flow of guns into Mexico would decrease illegal immigration and asylum claims at the U.S. border. Jean Guerrero, KPBS News.